Now, the other part of this is that this letter about Jesus' superiority is written to a group of people that were wavering in their faith, right? Jesus is better, you guys are wavering. And somehow there's this convergence that we call the book of Hebrews. It's the beauty of Jesus and the struggle of Jesus' people. They started strong, but at some point they drifted. The author even says that they were neglecting their great salvation. We've talked about how they were discouraged and disappointed, how they had fallen into what Paul had warned the Galatians of, and somewhere they became weary and well-doing. But here's what we've not yet talked about. Discouragement, disappointment, and weariness are almost always the products of distraction. See, we like to blame the circumstances, but the reality is it's the condition of our heart in the circumstances that leads us to discouragement and disappointment and weariness. And so there's this truth that if our hearts are distracted, we are prone to weakness that we're not prone to when our hearts are set where God desires that they be set. So we start we start with Jesus, right? This letter starts with who he is as the son of God, with what he's done for us in life, death, resurrection, and ascension. We follow him because he's worthy to be followed. But if we're not careful, our attention turns from him to ourselves. We are no longer rejoicing in the manna because we're craving meat. We're no longer abiding in his presence. We're dreaming about our future. We're no longer singing of the beauty of his sacrifice. We're lamenting the difficulty of our surrender. The excitement wears off and the immaturity, the imperfection of our hearts starts to come through. One of the things we have to be willing to acknowledge tonight is that we are easily distracted. But the beauty of Hebrews is that it tells a distracted people that there is a remedy for your distraction. Not just for your discouragement, because a lot of us have believed that if this would just change, everything would be all right. Right? When God finally does this, then all of it's going to be good. I'll be able to be obedient when God fulfills the promise that I believe he's made to me. And what Hebrews is telling us is God doesn't have to do anything to change your heart. Your heart has to be set where it belongs. Belongs. There is a remedy for our distraction. But the remedy is not what most of us expect it to be. It's not about being more focused or more disciplined. It's not about finding a strategy that works for us. It's not about the right reading plan that captures our attention or finding a community that makes us feel like we belong. The remedy for our distraction is this. We have a high priest. 